chair recognizes the gentleman from Florida, Mr. Gates, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You've said repeatedly today that you were not biased, but Bob Mueller kicked you off his team as a consequence of your bias, didn't he? Sir, I wouldn't agree with that characterization. I think I answered earlier, uh, my understanding was that, and again, we, there were no words spoken about this, but it was the potential appearance that he wanted to avoid as much as anything so else. So did Bob Mueller say, I'm not firing you from this team from your bias, I'm getting he did rid not. of you? So, so what is your basis for the belief that it's the appearance of your bias rather than your actual bias that resulted in Mueller removing you? Uh, because I think his experience both with me, my work, and the reputation of others about me and my work, that so what he knows that I am an individual who follows the facts where they lay. So, so your testimony today that you were removed not, not for bias but for the appearance of bias is based on your perception of Robert Mueller's perception of you. No, sir. I'm saying what I what I would think the logical case, if you want to know what his well, reasons were, you'd be let, let me ask it simply, Mr. Strzok. Did Robert Mueller ever ask you if you were biased against Donald Trump? He did not. Did he, so he didn't ask you when he hired you? No, that, that question is not that, typically that a question that, that, that gets asked during hiring meetings in the U.S. Gosh, government. Gosh, one experience. would seemingly think that if you were hiring someone to investigate something, you might ask. But certainly then, when you were removed, was, was it clear to you that Mr. Mueller was aware of these incendiary text messages? Yes. So he knew of the text messages, but never asked you whether you were biased or not? That's correct. Your girlfriend texted you on the 8th of August, Trump's not ever going to be president, right? Right? Do you recall your reply? Uh, I do recall my reply, and if I hadn't, it's been refreshing my recollection no less than four or five times today, sir. But yes, I do recall my reply. And what was it? Uh, I'm sure you have it. I don't want to misstate it, by, uh, but essentially, no, uh, no, he's not. We'll stop it. Did Bob Mueller ever ask you about that text message? He did not. Uh, about a week later, on August 15th, you sent a text message regarding a meeting in Andy McCabe's office. Is that right? Uh, I, I, I don't know the date. I do believe I know the text message. Did that Bob you're Mueller going to. ever ask you what happened in the meeting in Andrew McCabe's office? Uh, there are many meetings that I attended, and not many, but did several Bob Mueller ask you about any of them? He did not. Huh. Did Bob Mueller ask you what you meant by an insurance policy? Uh, Director Mueller did not. On the 26th of July, this is contemporaneous with the opening of the Trump-Russia investigation, your girlfriend texts you, Clinton just has to win now. And you reply a few days later, and damn, this feels momentous because this matters. The other one did too, but that was to ensure we didn't F something up. This matters because this matters. So super be glad to be on this voyage with you. Did, did Bob Mueller ask you why this matters? Uh, if you're asking why it mattered, it was I'm a not comparison asking, no, 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 between no, no, sorry, a, a case Strzok. about... I, I've uh, seen you do this uh, about about answer the, questions oh, yeah, that are not I, asked, but that is not what I'm asking you. I want to know if Bob Mueller asked you about this text message. Uh, Director Mueller did not ask me about any text message, Congressman. Well, gosh, what... I mean, just days after Mueller is appointed, in two text messages, one on the 19th of May and one on the 22nd of May, you reference impeachment. Did, did Bob Mueller ask you why you were referencing impeachment? The Congressman, as I just stated, Director Mueller did not ask me about any text message. Well, I find that very interesting, that Bob Mueller has to remove you as a consequence of bias. Now, you don't say it's bias. You say that based on your perception of Bob Mueller's perception of you, it couldn't possibly be your bias. It has to be the appearance of bias. But when we get into actually the manifestation of that bias through your words, Bob Mueller doesn't ask you about a single one of them. And so then I look at other people that Bob Mueller picked on his team, people like Lisa Page. I'm very curious to know whether or not he asked her about any of her incendiary text messages. I mean, but, but throughout the team, you've got people working for Bob Mueller who have active connections to, the Clint, to Hillary Clinton. You know, Greg Anders donated to the Clinton campaign. Kyle Freeney donated to the Clinton campaign. Andrew Goldstein donated to the Clinton campaign. Elizabeth Prigolar donated to the Clinton campaign. James Corals donated to the Clinton campaign. Jeannie Ree represented Ben Rhodes during the Benghazi investigation. He rep or sh uh, she represented the Clinton Foundation <laughs> against Freedom of Information Act requests. Andrew Weissman, the number two for Mueller, attended Hillary Clinton's election night party. 
Andrew, Aaron Zellaby represented Justin Cooper, who was the person who set up Hillary Clinton's private email serger, server. And then there's you and Miss Page. And it's just really interesting to me that when you were so uh, damaging to the investigation that you had to go, that Bob Mueller, the person who brought in all these people that, that had connections to the Hillary Clinton campaign, did not ask you about a single text message. And I tend to believe, Mr. Chairman, that it's because he did not want to know the answer and that there was bias and that your perception of Bob Mueller's perception of you is totally unreliable. And I yield back. Time of the gentleman has expired. The chair recognizes.